Hey guys. Oh, I'm doing so bad today. I actually forgot about this. <laughs> well, I I didn't. Uh, wait. I um, there is a. I didn't forget, but but I didn't look at the time, so so I was pretty late. <laughs> Um. So so let's see. Actually, I I I'm not prepared yet because. Uh, let's see what um, what topics Emacs Lisp, random keyboard. Uh, okay. So why don't we begin with Emacs Lisp and let's do a um. Uh, yeah. Let's do let's because yesterday and the day before we did random stuff so today let's do uh email list oh hey, hey uh, zitron maxim do you have to go in a bit like i, I i'm wondering which uh, should i do email list first or random uh hold on because you see i was working on my website and i forgot to look at the time <laughs> that i was eating uh what okay so um so yeah i will be back in four minutes okay doesn't matter okay good uh, okay i i'll be back in five minutes
I'm back. So, so let me get ready. So, um, let's put these. I need to go to my the live chat room. Oh, actually, actually, I can see it here. Then, so no problem. Uh, pop chat out. I was working on my website. You see, so I was working on. Um, I need to get a drink. So let's have a simultaneous coffee sip. <laughs> let's have a simultaneous coffee sip. I'm drinking, this is one giant orange juice. And plus, it's like 60% orange juice or 70% and 30% 30% energy drink today it's this you know let's have a simultaneous coffee sip mm. okay ready <laughs> one two three I'm having a mega sip. Okay, let's begin. You see, when you give a talk, you observe the audience and uh, you uh, work out how you talk as you go. Because, you know, if you see your audience is all sleeping, you know, get they, they get bored, you know, you, you see them, you know, doing something, you know, looking at their phones, then you know you gotta do something, you know, your talk is boring. So you change the subject or things like that, and uh, uh, okay, guys, say hi, say hi. So let's see what we have here. Uh, random keyboard, okay. Uh, Bartholomew, okay, thank you. Uh, Emac list, okay. Uh, let's do uh, Emacs list list then. Okay, and uh, oh, this is okay. Yeah, Emac list, and this is super interesting. You know, I've been doing this in the past few days. Uh, you know, t so today we're gonna do random chat, but also uh, Emacs list coding. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking to do Emacs list first, but because when people watch my videos, you know, uh, offline, you know, they 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 want they they want to begin with some topic. Any anyway, so I have been doing. Uh, you see these these. Um, uh, my programming blog. Let's go to my pro programming blog, and uh, let me show you. Okay. So, uh, Deseret Alphabet. This is super interesting. Okay, D Deseret Alphabet. Now, the Deseret Alphabet. Uh, it is a constructed alphabet invented around 1847 18, 1847 in America by moments you know the uh, a branch of Christianity moments you know they, they call themselves LSD latter day sense uh, something okay guys are you guys are they still there type something okay type something to make it interesting Okay, actually, I need to go to my um, my channel and get this properly. So hold on. So okay. So ah, this is so bad today. So okay, hold on a second. Okay. Tech. Okay, I'm still here, and uh, I need to hide my screen because I need to go to my YouTube channel stuff. YouTube channels. Uh, YouTube YouTube channels dashboard. Okay, so go to videos, and uh, uh, go to videos. Click on live. 
and uh, click on that and uh, other features other features lives live control room okay and live dashboard you know YouTube Google in general they change their interface all the time like every 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 um, every few months and uh, then they have beta you know not, now they have a beta version you they leave the beta like there for years and then there's also an option for you to switch back to cl classic uh, interface however the beta version is not complete so you have to you actually do have to switch to the classic interface so it's very confusing Google and Google has been become so bad so I'm back uh, I'm back again let's see um, okay I'm back again so here is my Google so I can actually see um, okay uh, so Deseret alphabet is in, invented in 19, 18, uh, 1847 by uh, Mormons and uh, it's construct, constructed alphabet the purpose of the alph alphabet is to um, so each letter that represent phon phonemes basically meaning a unit of pronunciation so that when you write English you know it, it's supposed to be a replacement for uh, Latin for English I mean it can be it, it's supposed to be so when you write uh, you know uh, English in the Deseret alphabet you will get I mean so that the you get the alphabet principle now this is a term in linguistics so the alphabet principle means the pronunciation corresponds to the written form exactly you know uh, somewhat like Spanish Spanish is like that it's called alphabet principle so when you write um, uh, when you write in Deseret Deseret alphabet you 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 will see you know it's it's written as it is read so let me show you some re, uh, written passage in the Deseret alphabet let's look at Wikipedia and there it is let's look at this picture and there is more um, hold on a second there is more <laughs> oh look they have a uh, Wikipedia logo in the Deseret alphabet this is <laughs> wait is that right uh, so yes there is a th yes exactly for th for the you know th th that sound um, so so this is how it looks like when it's written uh, for example now this is not a good example to show the pronunciation but but on Wikipedia you know it's a uh... oh okay so this is uh, uh, X KCD comic that features the so what did it say ever noticed how wiki Wikipedia has a new words it really likes what uh, uh, mala manto is a neologism for a portmanteau created by incorrectly combining a malapropism with a neologism okay and it is sales of a portmanteau <laughs> okay anyway so so you can see uh, let me show you the passage okay so fonts okay here is the pronunciation uh, you can see this is now by the way there are, there are quite a few phonetic alphabets for English in, you know constructed you know people invented there are like at least five five or six if you read uh, Wikipedia you go to the page uh, spelling reform then at the bottom you'll see a bunch of them actually there's a list of uh, uh, constructed language a anyway so there are quite a few you know people invented um, characters to represent the sound for English and by the way you can also do it with the AP um, 
this uh, international phonetic alphabet. This is called API, invented by by uh, French, uh, French people. But the API, International Phonetic Alphabet, the API, which is this part you see. Actually, so let me show you a few things since we are talking about this. Uh, so, okay, I, so many, so so many branches. I'm talking. So let's see. Um, Sali, uh, English, APL, Phonetic API. Not it's not called API. I I uh, I got it wrong. Um, so uh, let's go. Let's find it. Okay. So okay. So so hold on a second. Talk. Which let's go to the talk. Uh, talk page. Alphabet. Okay. Alphabet principle. That's that's when the uh, a language is written as it sounds as it reads. Then there is the um, international phonetic alphabets. Okay, let's go to my English wordy blog, and you will find it there. IPA, yes, thank you, Maxim. IPA, <laughs> international phonetic alphabet. Yeah, so I'm so silly, but I'm not that silly because you know in many of the uh, internationalized standards it came from France and in, Fr in French they reverse the letters for, ex for example metric system uh, you know for, for example a standard uh, GMT uh, Geneva, Geneva well anyway um, is, do you get what I mean? I guess not. <laughs> but anyway, many of the standard abbreviations for standard things, they they are not as it they reverse the letters. Uh, anyway, I should be able to, to think of an example. But any, uh, um, so wordy block language and English. Uh, let's see IPA. Uh, okay, so. So here's the IPA characters for English. This is R. This R. This is long R. This is R. For example, this is dark, heart, park, car, hawk, father, and this is R. Short R. Dot, part, heart, and so on. Add a a you know e e o o. Uh, so those are IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. On the other hand. The middle column is American Heritage Dictionary, uh, the symbol they use. On the on the th uh, third column is Merriam West Webster. So you see, in general, American dictionaries they just cook up their own characters to show the pronunciation. But usually, in UK, United Kingdom, or elsewhere, India, they all use IPA to indicate the pronunciation. So anyway, that is IPA. So IPA is a phonetic alphabet. So why can't we just use IPA to represent English? Well, because IPA um, is rather more complicated. Because I IPA is rather very detailed. They do not just capture the phonemes of the word. They, they can they you know IPA is designed to represent any language. You know because they they are designed somewhat scientifically to represent how your um, your mouth your you know, teeth position, your lips, your tongue position. So they come up with this whole bunch of characters. Now for English, this is basically all you need. So you have like one, two, three, four, five, ten, you know, fifteen symbols to represent English sounds, phonemes. But however for uh but but however the full IPA you know character set they are like uh thirty, forty or something. And and because they are very detailed, they can act actually capture not just the phonemes of a language, you know, how the, how the the basic phonetic unit of a language, but they can also capture the a little bit kind of like the how each person pronounce something differently. Uh, you know, they try to do that. So I've read that the opera opera singers, you know, opera is usually written in Italian or something. 
and uh, you know they they need to sing it. So sometimes they use IPA to indicate how how you sing because when you sing opera, usually it's you don't sing it the way it's written. Um, so anyway, that's IPA. So IPA is very complicated. It's got fifty or you know, and also it's got it's not you know you see you see it's a got combination of characters. So it it is rather ugly if you write English using IPA, you know, because for example, this AI is actually two characters. So a lot of people have come up with a, um, a phonetic alphabet for English um, IPA. So a lot of people have come up phonetic alphabet for English. So um, Desiree. Desiree alphabet is just one of them. So okay, okay let's uh, let's go back to the Desiree alphabet. So you know there it is. Um, that's interesting. So another one. Let me show you another one. So another one is Shavian alphabet. Okay. Shavian alphabet. I have it here. Now this is uh, this is invented in 1960s. So let's see the. Deseret. So Des Deseret is 1847. So Deseret was there first by moments. Then the Shavian alphabet or Shang, uh, it's named after George but Bernard Shaw. Uh, Shaw. Shaw. It's a um, Irish play, right? Have Have anyone seen uh, George Bernard Shaw's uh, play or something? I've never. Uh, so. I'm not familiar with him, but anyway, it's named after him because George Bernard Shaw. It looks, uh, you know, apparently he is very into um, English spelling reform. You know, he he won a, uh, um, you know, he 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 wants the phonetic alphabet principle. You know, so he um, but. When he uh, is alive, he did not invent it. But however, he written in his will, and he put some money, so that when he died, you know, he want people to invent a uh, alphabet. Uh, so it, they started a competition, and out of hundred or few hundred entries, this one won out. So it's called Shavian alphabet. Now there's some interesting characters about Shavian alphabet. Now you see the this row and this row. They are like they are just a hundred eighty degree reversal, and the, the top row is like you have the ascenders. Like ascenders is like you know when you, when you have like characters like. Hey, good morning, Matija. So ascenders is like when you have characters like D, F, you know O A I, uh, U. So this. Are uh, you know the vowels, uh, a e i o u, okay? And uh, this character you see, th they come above it. It's called ascenders. Then you have descenders. Descenders is like g, uh, j, you know. So in the Shavian alphabet, you you have this. The top row are ascenders. The bottom row are descenders. And also the top row, they represent sounds like um, voiceless consonants, like. You know, uh, any anyway, voiceless consonants. However, if you reverse it 180 degrees with uh, descenders, then they are voiced. You know, they are voiced version of the voiceless one. So that's the the consonants. There are like a couple couple of exceptions though. But anyway, then there are these you know characters uh, that represents. Um, uh, short letters. Well, well, they represent consonant consonants and also vowels. Okay, but you see, okay, so many of these characters represent represents a combination of vowel and. Uh, okay. Anyway. So. Bartholomew forgot his headset, so sadly he cannot listen to your stream. <laughs> okay, uh, 
Michael or Mitchell or Michi. Hey, uh, is this stuff here include in your Emacs tutorial too? No. <laughs> Are you kidding? This part? You mean on my webpage? This Xali info? No. So all my Emacs stuff uh, is on ergoemacs.org website. I mean, if you want to buy it, then you get that. Then Xali info, you got a bunch of things. You got math, programming languages, you got, you know, Unicode and uh, um, keyboard, you know, lots of things. If, if you like it, if you want to support me, I sell it too, $100. It's got 4,000 pages, you know. Anyway, so so let's, uh, so we talk about this red alphabet, then, and, and also the, um, yeah, this, Shavian, Shavian alphabet, then there is the Deseret alphabet. Okay, Shavian and uh, um, uh, okay, here, Deseret. Now, Deseret alphabet, there's also, I mean, they, they all have lots of interesting characteristics, but Deseret, one, one of them about Deseret alphabet is that they don't have ascenders and descenders. You see, they don't have characters that go above the line, you know, or go below the line. Okay, so let me actually let me show you a CSS. Um, let me show you what about the font. You know, font itself is you know, there's a lot of things about font. Font, the huge history of font. Um, you know, in the beginning, the printing press they it's the metal. Let's see, uh, font family, standard font, font, meaning of font size, okay, here. Now, this is very, actually very interesting. You know, when you do website today, you know, using CSS and, and all that, you know, you can change the font, right? For example, you can go to, um, for example, let me go to my CSS file. This is my CSS file. And let's search for all lines that contain font, you know, all these. So let's go uh, over here. Um, so for example this line you say you see I say font family times new Roman if that is not found then use serif okay so you have font family now on a website if you change the font family they actually change the font size it becomes you know like it's not like you can just change fa fa font family for a different style because every time you change the font family, your page, you know, the, the font size all change. It becomes super small, you know, and readable or too big. So every time you change font size, you need also to change the, I mean, when you change font family, you also need to change the font size. You know, so this is illogical. You rather think, you know, wh why is that? Because, and there's no standard, like, like each font family, their size, the, the you know, Suppose, you know, what I'm saying is that you have two font families. Let's say font A and font B. Let's say they both are using size 16 pixels, okay, which is standard, 16 pixels. But however, on a page, they look very, you know, their apparent size is actually different. And there's no standard that says what font family, the default size is actually what. There's none. I mean, even they are all the same size, but they are, they, they, they are size uh, very widely. Why is that? Because of this, okay. So this picture, it shows uh, what actually a font size means. So this blue box is the actual font size. You know, so font, font size actually means a designer's, uh, you know, a virtual box, where within the box you design the font. <laughs> but how so so each font you know for example this is one font family this is another font family they look different even though their size you know their font size is exactly the same this font family is much smaller that's not all because for some font they actually go outside of the design box you know so this is completely idiotic it's a problem you know it's a major problem you can you, you know you cannot change you know font family easily because each time you change you have to also adjust the font size so they look you know properly uh, so this is a problem with modern you know the CSS font community and they 
apparently they are not no one has I haven't seen anyone you know making a complaint about these but this is actually a real problem you know um, you know all these websites they talk about design you know design any anyway I think they are crap okay uh, they, they talk about about responsibly you know responsive design and all those you know all, over the past 20 years all the designers come up you know they tell you what you should do on websites it's it's all garbage in my opinion they are partly you know the reason they are like that is is part ha half the reason is because corporation you know corporatism they want to make money so they design it you know they the all their ideas opinions behaviors they are you know what they do is they want to make more money they don't actually really care about the actual you know usability or design you know and uh, then you know the typical programmers like the, the hackers you know the unix philosophy the types they they say oh you you need to be um you know that's you know you you need to be you know readable for uh the blind or things like that it's it's all garbage uh real out of the box thinking yeah so anyway so that's about font okay and then here is a terminology about font you know you see you see you have the cap head ascender head you have baseline you have the x head you have the descender head so so those are as ascenders and those are descenders and by the way font design it's like that because um, well, I can show you Wikipedia pictures. Actually, um, uh, let's let's go. Font design, you know, they have this truly idiotic, illogical standard. Is because because historically, originally, when you have a font, font just means a set of metal uh, boxes that. Uh, that it's, it, you you use it kind of like a stamp, you know, like a, you know the thing you <laughs> you use that to press it, and the uh, um, font. Okay, let's see. Um, they have a some pictures there. Let, let me show you. I, I just want to show you the picture. Now I, I guess it's not here. You know, it's buried in some of the other. Um, Found embedding buried in some other articles. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Typeface, weight, size, weight, digital typography, uh, font family, typeface. Okay, I think maybe it's there. Typeface. You know, also these words, font, typeface, font family, they kind of also change over time, you know. So, um, Yeah. Anyway, there is a Wikipedia somewhere. Let's see. Um, calligraphy, type design, um, type setting. Okay, type setting. Uh, let's hope so. Okay, there it is. Okay, so font originally is just set a set of these metals. You know that's why it's called type setting. You, you know, you take a bunch of these pieces, you place them on a row, and you know you arrange them. You place them on a row. So it's that's why it's a type set, you know, it's like a set of things, kind of like that, you, historically, you know, type set. So this is the, you know, this is this is the printing, you know, this is the one of the printing technology. They change every, you know, hundred years. So anyway, that's you know the type set. So when we have, you know, our the word today, capital case, lower case, why capital, why lower? Why don't you say big? case or small case well it's capital and lower case because upper case or lower case because these boxes you know the capital case is placed <laughs> on top you have to reach for it you know you take those you know pieces those are low uh, up case then lower case is below that is why you have up case and low you know uh, uh, low case cap capital case or lower case that's you know all history uh so you know that's what it looks like. So that's that's font. Uh, so that's one of the problem with the CSS font problem. Okay, hold on a second. Let me um, uh, copy that. And the meaning of font size. I want to show that. Okay, uh, close, 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 paste. Uh, actually, I don't want to paste it. So actually, that that. 
Uh, uh, okay, so uh, uh, where did I go? Okay, so let's let's just uh, meaning of font font size. Okay, so we talked about um, type typeface uh, font meaning of font size, IPA International Phonetic Alphabet. Uh, we talked about this Deseret alphabet. Oh yeah, so we were talking about Deseret alphabet, and uh, the Deseret alphabet is used by Mormons. You know, it's a religious group, and they part of the reason is actually you know I think you know people debate about it. Part of the reason they invented this alphabet is so that their writing can be secret. You know, can be secretive. So only Mormons, Mormons, they learn it, they they read it, they, they so they become a sec secluded group. So anyway, so Deseret alphabet. Now Deseret alphabet, it also have capital case and lower case, but they look exactly the same. You know, they just change the size. You know, which so this way is actually kind of logical. Uh, in a sense, you know, usually things like that may not work out, you know, because there are so many factors in real life. Uh, but anyway, another characteristics of the Deseret alphabet is that they, they don't have ascenders and descenders. You see, you look at the characters, all of them are of the same height, you know. Uh, that turned out to be a mistake, you know. One of you know the people they designed it mentioned later it's a mistake, because when you don't have ascenders and descenders, every character it, it becomes uniform, and it, it it is actually harder to read. So that's interesting thing about font. Uh, so I was working on my website with these, um, you know, that's a Chinese characters. Uh, so I was, you know, uh, written with a brush. This is this is uh, Sun Yixian, which is considered uh, considered the father of China, both in Taiwan and, uh, you know, China, People's Republic of China. You know, but by the way, so let me tell you the clarify the naming of China. So you have Chinese, you know, you know, you have China, which is a big land. Then you have Taiwan. Now the reason they are different, they are two two different government because back in nineteen fifties there's a giant civil war. The, you know there's two parties, the Kuomintang Party and the Communist Party. The Communist Party is uh, partly supported by Russia, and the KMT Kuomintang Party is partly supported by USA. You know you you give them weapons so they fight. So even eventually. The nationalist, you know, the the Kuomintang, the nationalist party, they lost, so they fled to Taiwan. Uh, in in nineteen fifty or nineteen sixty, some, somewhere around there, I was born in nineteen sixty eight. So anyway, so that's why you have China, the communist, you know, rule the China, and you have a different government, the nationalist, uh, rules Taiwan. That's why you have di you know different. Now the the official name for the China, the big China, is uh, People's Republic of China. Now the official name for Taiwan is Republic of China. So, so you see, there's a difference. One is People's Republic of China. The other one is just Republic of China. But usually, you know, we most people we just call it Taiwan. And Taiwan today, there's you know there, there's many chaos and also. They want you know some part of people some some people some you know th they want inter independence meaning that they want Taiwan to be a country by itself like the name will be just Taiwan not not anything Chinese or China this is this is Taiwan Taiwan you know they they have a you know that's and one you know Ta Taiwan has now several political parties any anyway. But however, in both countries, okay, in in China, the mainland China. Their leader, you know, the paramount, you know, the official leader is the Mao, as you know, Mao Zedong, you know, the Mao guy. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, the nationalist China, the Taiwan, uh, originally the Taiwan Nationalist Party, supported by USA, they their leader is the uh, Jiang Kai Shi. Okay, hi, good morning, Green Deck, Jiang Kai Shi. Okay, so. So the the founder of these two different China parties are you know different, but however, both Taiwan and China they recognize this guy, 
Sun Yixian. So he, here is his name, Sun Yixian. He is recognized as the father of modern China because it is he began to modernize China. You know, throw 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 away the dynasties, the you know emperor, the yeah the emperor, the dynasty. Uh, they changed into the modern kind of. You govern by uh, modern law, kind of. So Sun Yixian, you know, that's kind of the history of China, which is heavily influenced by the communism, you know, back then, because communis communism was a thing. It's a ideology, you know, where everyone will be happy, you, you know, you share, you know, things like that. Uh, anyway, so that's a little story about China in Taiwan. Uh, so we were talking about this desert alphabet. So let's, I think let's let's do Emacs then. So Maxim, are you still there? Let's Maxim, Maxim, <laughs> you are <laughs> okay. Um, so let's do Emacs. There is one thing I want to do. Okay, let's go to. Um, let, let me show you. Okay, so you know, actually, there are so many interesting things I want to talk about because we haven't talked about these several blog things. Uh, Desert alphabet, Shavian alphabet. Um, uh, okay. A anyway, so let's talk about uh, Emac Lisp. Let me show you what I want to do. So I'm going to, I want to code. I'm going to do a live coding, and uh, I'm going to show you now. I'm going to ex explain what do I need to do. So this is my Xar talk show. One of my Xar talk show. Uh, I put on my website, so I let's open the page. So you see, view browser, viewing browser. Okay, that's that, and uh, you can see this YouTube video here. Now this text block of code that's YouTube video. So now let me turn on xar start command log mod. Okay, so. So on the left window, yeah. you can see all my Emacs commands. Okay, so this this block of code is this uh, YouTube. Now, now you see, so it is you see here embedded. Uh, let's go to a YouTube uh, video. So let's let's try. Let me show you some commands. Emacs commands. Um, let's see YouTube. What is interesting in YouTube? Ah, st st stupid duck duck go. Always go to Wikipedia. Uh, Okay, so let's pick something you know, generic, some like of general interest. Okay, okay, <laughs> you know, the YouTube advertisements. Uh, uh, well, let's pick something generic. Let's see. Oh, I don't have anything generic, do I? Uh, the best of classical. Okay, let's pick this. Amazing counterpoint. Now, counterpoint is uh, counterpoint is a name. Hold on a second. Okay, counterpoint means you know it's a technique, techni technique of composition uh, to compose a type of a song, type of music called fugue, fugue and canons. Well, not canons, fugue. Okay, which is famous. You know, most famous. Box, box fugue is m most fam famous. Now this is very interesting if you are into if you are a nerd, if you are into math programming stuff. So you might go to YouTube and you know look up what's what is a fugue and Wikipedia. There's a lot of articles. Anyway, fugue, the the primary way to compose fugue. The reason fugue, the gist, the essence of fugue is that it's counterpoint, meaning that. Mean, meaning that you have one melody, okay, one melody, then you have an another melody, but somehow these two melodies are related, like like they contrast each other. Uh, and basically, you use the same melody throughout your composition. 
but you 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 do variations on the melody then you put the two of them both of them together like in parallel or three of them together like you can reverse the you know play backwards you can prolong them you can sh shrink them the length or you can move them higher pitch lower pitch or reverse the pitch you know when low goes high it becomes high goes low you know things like that so so all these are t are called counterpoint now the thing is you cannot simply you know you cannot start with the melody and start to just mix them ran randomly like prolong it reverse it you know and put two of them together that because that doesn't sound good it come out will sound not so good actually i you know i haven't tried it you know <laughs> you guys who uh, into synthesizers you might try it but i i think you know if, if you st uh, apparently it doesn't sound good because otherwise people would you know it would be so easy to create fugue so th the art of the fugue is about you know using these techniques however you want to make it so that it come you know when it's when it plays it it sounds really great fantastic so this one okay so this this video amazing counterpoint analysis of c sharp minor fugue from the well temper clap here uh, i don't uh, c sharp minor i think that's a uh, fugue number four i think let's play it a little bit let's see uh, uh, Okay, I guess you guys cannot hear it much. Maybe a little bit. This is the most amazing fu fugue, <laughs> indeed. Amazing counterpoint. This is uh, this is my fa you you could say this is my favorite song of all or uh, of all the songs in history, pop or whatever. This piece. Okay, the, uh, let's say top five. N you know. This is a fugue. Uh, I, I believe it's fugue number four, exactly. Okay, fugue number four. Bach's well-tempered clavier, book one, fugue number four. This is a you know counterpoint. It's, it's, it's got five voices. You know, people say this so-called so five voices, meaning that you have okay, you have one piece, one melody. Okay, give a melody. You do variations on the melody, like reverse pitch. You know, upside down. You know, turn it left, right move it up or down so you use these techniques to create a fugue however you put you put five of them like at some point there are five of these going together at the same time uh, so that's why um, it, you know it's it's incredible it's difficult to do i mean you can do it you can just randomly pick any melody and you know create one but it doesn't sound good in order to sound good now that is the subject matter of music theory you know so you know so what does um, two notes when does two notes sounds good you know when 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 is a sequence note sounds you know melodious when is it doesn't sound good you know for, for example one example of not sounding good is the same sound all the time like da 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 <laughs> you play that for 5 minutes that doesn't sound good you know so when 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 does you know you have this bunch of notes you can think of them just like numbers you know so what sequence of numbers make it you know melodious to the to our ears okay that's one thing music theory then music theory talks about uh chords you know harmony you know when does uh when does a simultaneous number of notes sounds good when does it not and how do you you know make a sequence of them such that it sounds good so that's the part of music theory and so when you write a fugue you want them to sound good of course and that you know so so Bach wrote this one it's very interesting so anyway so for example so I'm writing a blog you know today I woke up I saw this oh this is fantastic I copy the URL I go to my blog I paste it here you see that's a URL link then I press a button okay let's see there it is it becomes that okay let me show it again uh, let's put it here okay let's show it there so the command is 
HTML any linkify but actually actually that the command xi HTML any any linkify actually is a wrapper to several bunch of commands in this case it actually called YouTube linkify xi YouTube linkify okay that one so enter you see so you see I have this command I it changes this URL into this form. This form is, you know, this form is is what you need when you want to embed a YouTube video. But sometimes, you know, when I'm looking at my blog, you know, so I, I have written this blog, right? I have written it. Now, okay, so wait, hold on a second. So I have written this blog. Now I want to tell people about this video, uh, YouTube video. So I need to actually convert it. I want to, you know, paste to Twitter. I want need, I need to convert the URL back to the original, you know, form. So that's what I need to do. So let's write a command. Let, let's let's write a command right now. Uh, oh, you can get copyright strike for classical music. Really? Not today. I, 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 well, I, because because I see tons of them, and usually they don't get take taken off. Like usually they don't take, get taken off. Instead, YouTube will say, you know, typically like if you go to any like if you just search for Bach music, let, let's do it. YouTube. Um, I have this question. Actually, I I want um, Bach, well tempered clavier book one. Okay, let's see just well tempered clavier. Uh, okay, for for example, this one. This, uh, by the way, this this piece. You know, Bach's well tempered clavier. There are two books. You know, two books of compositions. Book one and book two. Each book has twenty-four um, prelude and fugues. Twenty-four of them. Each one is a pair, prelude and fugue. So a total of forty-eight songs in each book. So book one has forty-eight songs. Twenty-four of them prelude. Twenty-four of them fugue. We usually they are paired. Like number one prelude fugue, number two prelude fugue. You know so on. Same thing for book number two. Now, you know, you go buy records, but you know, you want to buy records of these. There are many uh, pianists, you know, play that or or using, you know, harpsichord. Of all of them, I listened, you know, like tens of them <laughs> because I'm very into it in the 1990s. And, uh, you know, uh, you listen to all of them. I, I, OK, so let's show um, Xali Bach MIDI, OK? So I, I I used to like write a list of all you know I'm thinking I create a list of all classical compositions in history and uh, with my own ratings and comments on it <laughs> so I started to do this in 1990s so this is you know this is part of it I haven't been updating it because you know any any because since the internet began since the internet began, you know, there's lots of things on the web. You can, you know, Wikipedia, they have far more detail. But anyway, so uh, so here is a list of all the least, not all actually, uh, least compositions. And so I have one for Bach. Let's see. Um, Uh, I I don't somewhere here okay anyway so anyway so you see I have MIDI files here MIDI file used to be popular but today no browser supported out of the box you know it just downloaded very annoying uh, it would be fantastic because MIDI MIDI is a uh, format a digital format to record the notes so it's particularly good for instrumental music like piano symphony because the file size is tiny you know for example for five minutes music in mp3 uh, which is usually five megabytes but in midi it's just five kilobytes 
you know it's tiny because they only they don't actually record the sound they actually they just record the the note and how long it lasts things like that and what instrument you know so you got just a bunch of notes this so this is very extremely elegant as a programmer you know this is truly elegant and fantastic but however to play midi you need you need a synthesizer because it only contain notes you need a you know a, a digital piano to actually play the note uh so back then you know in in year 2000s it's very popular you have you know browsers you have plugin you can just play it but somehow it just uh rotted away so you know people don't know what midi is anymore except in the music in music industry that is still critical uh, so anyways so these are midi i collected you know uh they I, I, you know they are open source mostly i mean without copyright it, usually it's hard to find out what's a copyright but i try to collect only ones that without copyright oh so back uh, speaking of copyright back to the you know what we were talking about so of all the uh uh, performers of the box well tempered clavier this one is my favorite absolutely this Wanda Landowska okay um, Wanda Landowska she you know she's a she's a Bach specialist and also she plays a uh, very very weird instrument this this is harpsichord which is a precursor to piano but however her she is using a particular uh harpsichord made just for her actually it's it's called um clever you know something clever harpsichord anyway anyway you can look up wikipedia on wanda landowska so so her performance is my favorite uh, but the recording is not so great the because back then this is 1980s you know she died you know i think 1980s or something uh the recording is not too good because you hear you know the background noise and so on but her in you know the in the music community in the pianist community you say her interpretation you know <laughs> you know each community they have their jargons so instead of saying her performance or her style you say her interpretation of Bach <laughs> somebody's you know oh I like this interpretation of Chopin you know uh, you know um, a wrist you know those are jargons you know elite you know the uh, you know knowing those jargons keep you is a badge for for you being in a community <laughs> you know like for programmers you have to speak of hacker like hacker you know hacker and the you know stuff uh, so yeah so we were talking about copyright so there are tons of you know t hundred thousands or millions of classical music and I wonder about this is definitely copyright I know uh, this is by RCA I don't think it's expired anyway a lot of the I don't think this is it possibly I don't I doubt it but anyway you know what happens you see you see on music on YouTube you see this okay let me show you you see here about a few years ago maybe five years ago YouTube started to have this this thing so it says you know music in this video because they have AI you know they they know with what music it is and you know music in this video listen ad free with YouTube premium and so on and also look here licensed to YouTube by then you know whatever the company now this section is not added by this guy I know for yeah, I, I know for sure 100 percent it's not added by whoever uploaded the video the, the guy who uploaded visual the video typically are scammers you know they just they they copy you know they take things they upload then they they make money they put ads I have ad blockers that's why you don't see it you know the it, typically uh, on a on a video like this two hours you see ads every five minutes you know this so this typically these people are scumbags you know you you have like millions of them on music on everything 
scumbags. But anyway, YouTube itself is also a scumbag. Of course, they are just they they are just legalized scum. So f about five year, years ago, YouTube started to do this thing, you know, licensed by something something. Now you wonder. So I wonder what is the legality? You know, can I, for example, can I just rip rip this and put on my website? Do I get sued? You wonder about that. You see, because. Uh, Anyway, I, I suppose this is actually legal because you know Google probably talked to many of these uh, companies, and so that you know. So I, my question is: Does the ad money in part go to those companies? Uh, yeah, here's my question: Do the ad money? You know, so this guy, I suppose he's he's got ads. So I think thirty percent or forty percent goes to the the video maker, the whatever who uploaded this, the other sixty percent go to Google. Now my question is: th Does some part of that actually goes to the music company? That is my question. Uh, because you know, I uh, I observe things. I want to know if they are Google is uh, being a scumbag here. You know, um, you know they are powerful. So Green Deck, you can get copyright for classical music. I heard that some orchestras have copyright for their specific recording. Yeah, of course. You know, if you do a recording, that's absolutely copyrighted by you. But but the composition is also copyright. But the, for classical music, they are you know long time expired. <laughs> they don't have copyright law back then. Uh, Oh, usually when music is de detected, all ads goes to music rights owner. Is that true? Because I'm not sure. Because otherwise, you wouldn't see lots of these videos, you know. Because these people, I know for sure. Maybe not him. I I haven't looked into this guy. I mean, there are ten thousands, you know, hundred thousands of them. If if the if YouTube actually take the money. You know, if these people don't make any money, I'm pretty sure they'll stop uploading. They will stop doing that. But they are not stopping. You know, you still have lots of, you know, so. Uh, yeah, so maybe I think they are still getting money. You see, this is the scum part of Google. You see, if we go strictly by legality, okay, Google should not, you know, when, when Google sees this, it, Google should immediately kick the guy off because that's copyright, you know, right? You know, Google talking about, you know, we talking about, you know, government, all the nice people, they talk about, you know, following the law, so copyright. So Google, no, this is not by him. Google should kick him, uh, kick him out. However, apparently Google is actually paying him, you know, because ads, you know, he, so far we are guessing a bit, a bit here. So, so Google, so so what, here's the thing, what, you know. So I'm thinking, so Google actually, they want these scumbags, they want these guys to upload videos, so that you know. So these scumbags are actually working as a farm workers, you know. They so they they upload all sort of videos, you know, in the you know millions of people in every corner of the world, you know, from m music you never heard of, you know. Uh, copyrighted music, okay. Google want them to to do that. So once to do that, Google pay them a little bit, of course, thirty percent or whatever. But the point is, these millions of people, the sixty percent of money goes to Google. So Google benefit. Forget about copyright. You know, if you truly care, if you stick too low, then these fuckheads should not get any pay. They they should not get any money, right? But if they don't get any money, nobody will start to upload any music anymore. So Google lost these millions of you know farm workers, kind of making money for Google. So Google is the fucking scumbag, you know, one of the most. If you know, if that is true, you know, these big companies. <laughs> Battle of Mew, you are back. We are almost done, actually. So should we still do the list? Uh, uh, yeah, so a lot of digressions. Mac, Mac Sim, do you st uh, 
likes to see it still I maybe I should complete it it will take probably 20 minutes uh, 10 to 20 minutes Maxim are you still there uh, let's see how many seven people so actually yeah so this talk is getting long long so let me try to do it okay so um, so okay so what need I what do I need to do so I go to my uh, Emacs uh, Maxim okay so let's do this uh, Elise plan let's see how far we can go so I go to my Mac uh, I, uh, I go to my uh, Emacs um, my init file directory I create a new buffer here I save it as xx youtube.el okay just just a temp temp name okay and uh, today today's date and let's defend okay uh, let's defend defend uh, sa youtube uh, get link again uh, okay let, let's just run the name okay because our back YouTube URL meaning that we want to convert this block of text to a original uh, URL so what I do so I, we got a text here so let's uh, start to code it uh, Uh, let's make it simpler so let's say region okay meaning that to call this command we have to do a region first because otherwise we need to um, you know find the beginning find the end um, let's just do the region first if we have time let's do something so so let so let I want to uh, two variables p1 and p2 those are beginning position and end position region beginning and region end so set um, we don't need set okay so here uh, let me just do so p1 will equals to region beginning okay and uh, p2 will be equals to uh, region end position okay so we got p1 and p2 and now uh, let's do this quickly without thinking about you know elegance or efficiency okay so um, so we got a region so region um, so uh, narrow to region okay I want to narrow to region uh, p1 p2 so that my code will not touch anything outside of this this block uh, narrow to region but before we do that we need to um, remember what is the region because otherwise when the command is finished people people will end up like just like that narrow to region you know we want to we don't want you know we want to end up like original however they begin so uh, region so I forgot what's the command. So go to start Emacs, uh, practical Emacs, then go to region um, practical Emacs Lisp, then Emacs Lisp basic functions, basic functions. So let's see buffer, get buffer name, switch buffer, create buffer, kill buffer. Okay, it's not there. And uh, cursor buffer read write write command okay mark and region save excursion actually that's good answer but that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't do this one there's another one um the save read restriction it saves the cruiser position and uh, the current buffer you know in case you switch to other buffer uh, and other things but it doesn't uh, save I don't think so it doesn't save we, we can try it save restriction okay so let's so let's do that so let's just do that okay 
Okay, so let's eval the buffer. So now I go to this buffer, I call the command xar YouTube, uh, okay, xar back YouTube URL region. Oh, I need to select the region. Okay, select the region, call it uh, xar back YouTube. Symbols value is void. Why is that? What? Let symbols value as variable is void. P1. Oh, I got it wrong. Okay, so so this is the problem of paren. Uh, I think that, yeah. Yep. So eval buffer, let's try it again. Eval buffer, select the region, call the command, start back YouTube URL region. Call it. It works. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is that really, uh, I guess? Oh, so they uh, save restrict. Oh, save restriction. Yeah, okay, so I got it. <laughs> so yeah, so save excursion does not do that, but save restriction does. Save res restriction is what I wanted. But I'm pretty sure save excursion does not do that. <laughs> but however, that that got me into this. Okay, so that's what we want. So we save restriction, restriction na then narrow to buffer. Then let's look at the... Um, where is my code? Okay, so so basically we want so let's copy that here. Um, so go to char buffer um, buffer point minimum. Okay. Point point minimum point min means the returns the number that is the the least I mean the beginning of the buffer. So, you know, typically it's one. Okay, it's it's usually always one. Actually, I I do not know a case when it is not one. So it's like you can say one. So we want to go to the beginning, and uh, uh, let's let's use my tutorial to get a template so let's we what, what we want to do now is find and replace find replace text so there is the we have the template here let's just copy that so go to chart template find replace case fold case fold search yes case fold means case insensitive okay true means case insensitive okay uh, then then we want to go to char point minimum okay then we want while search um, okay split while search search that replaced by that then search that replaced by empty Okay, so this is actually quite tedious. Let's put a few more. Then we want to search that by. Okay, then that we don't care. Actually, um, okay, let's just code it. So I want to. Okay, so. Hold on a second. So first of all, it's on top figure. I want I want to remove figure, right? But we I don't want to remove figure caption. But I want to remove uh, that. Okay. Then I want to remove. Remove the frame.
uh, actually uh, actually the best thing to do is we just want to yeah we just want to search for the source uh, <laughs> I'm being so silly actually what all we want, want all we need to do is search use a regular expression search for this line and extract this URL then 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 mani uh, then change this URL without the embed basically that's all we have to do so uh, then put that on a uh, clipboard you know on the key ring yeah that's all uh, uh, but since we are doing this let's just try it differently that, you know uh, since you know so we can just show some codes see how they run yeah okay so um, so figure caption so uh, go to go to char point min and uh, search for word okay search for word figure caption okay and uh, that we don't need okay and uh, split go back we need p3 p4 positions okay set p3 equals to point okay so this will set the point to the end of figure caption okay then let's do that again go to the beginning and search for that search forward then search um, okay and set that to p4 okay now um, now let's delete okay let's just try that so what we have what we're doing is that we are uh, okay so this whole block this whole block needs to be inside okay so what we are doing is narrow to region and start to find replace replace figure replace figure replace iframe then go to the beginning find the end position of figure caption save it to p3 then we go to the beginning find the end beginning position of figure caption save it to p4 then we delete uh, then we okay so then we um, buffer string no properties okay now we uh, we add another variable meet okay then we say set meet okay then we extract from position p3 and p4 now that is a figure caption text okay this is a fig cap text okay um, okay so then we did we do re uh, repeat delete the figure caption delete the figure caption tags then we um, let's say let's see what happens now okay now let's eval the buffer go back here go back to my okay here okay make a backup now select it call the command let's see great uh, we are halfway done so you know it removes all the tags except this frame thing um, okay let's continue on with that so back to our code so so far we need to uh, let's do that okay so now we need to extract this so let's do that uh, go to the beginning 
go to the beginning and uh, search for what rejects okay so search for what regular expression then the regular expression we want is this okay is this part okay so it's going to be let me let me try to type it uh, first of all we don't need optional okay the search for SR C equals true okay then okay here is the here's when you need lots of backslashes toothpick syndrome uh, okay let's try it, if we can do that um, okay I have a brief so we so what we want to search we, we want to search any character until we reach the back quote I mean the double quote okay so that expression is um, uh, okay we can type it actually um, so let's capture anything comma slash a to z a to z okay one or more oh, actually let's say not backslash not backslash that okay uh, and uh, so I think that's the expression we want and let's just try it put it here okay so so that is the pattern to capture the URL basically but now in when you have a regular expression and when that regular expression is in a list you need more back slash so from experience I know you need that there you need that there <laughs> this is this is Emacs um, let's try that okay uh, Emacs regular expression toothpick syndrome okay f so forward regular expression so once we found that we uh, we want to get the captured point captured you know the URL so uh, match string uh, wait wait what happened okay so match string uh, set Q URL let's say YouTube URL um, uh, let's say URL okay then match string first okay option we don't need option okay then then let's say then okay then go back to the beginning search for what okay search for iframe then delete current line okay what's the command for delete line uh, kill line I guess um, uh, what is the uh, what is the command to kill current line I guess kill line Okay, so kill line. Oh my God, this today I wasted lots of time. So kill line. So kill line is okay. So kill line. Let's see. You see what what we do not want a command that is designed for interactive use. It it's always better to to use a command that's not designed for interactive use in Emacs Lisp. So actually, the kill line is not the answer. Okay, I I I I know I remembered. Uh, I be, uh, well, if you want to know, for example, if you go to my Emacs Lisp tutorial, 
uh, search for line, uh, you see there's an article that's all about mani manipulating lines. You know, which one is proper to use? You know, you have line beginning position. You move beginning of line, next line, and uh, but anyway, I know what the 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 you know if you want to kill the current line in Emacs list, the best way is this. Okay, let me show you. Um, delete region. Uh, okay, delete region. Okay, then use delete region and give two positions. The position will be line beginning position. Use that function. Okay, use that function, not any other. Not you know or the other line peak beginning position <laughs> not others okay so delete region line beginning position line end position that's how you kill the current line uh, delete it not not putting in the kill ring okay so we search forward for iframe then we just delete that line because we already extracted the URL we don't need the line anymore so so once we extracted the then we say insert okay insert url okay uh, now the url is a new variable we need to add it here okay let's say youtube url okay uh, youtube url you know when i code i usually try to use a word that use a string that is unique you know instead of an English word because that way when you need to refactor when you need to do find replace for example I want to rename this variable I can do so easily without work you know without stamping on others so it's a good thing to have unique variable names that is why I use these uh, names um, okay so eval this buffer go back to this re this buffer select it let's see if it works please meta x start back youtube you okay call it <laughs> yes <laughs> yes thank you it works so guys say something okay i feel i feel lonely here um we are we are, so we are done so there's one more thing to do because this this url is not proper you know it when you paste that URL, you know that URL is uh, designed for embedding. But if you paste it, YouTube will play it. Not always. Okay, it'll, it'll work now. Okay. But for example, if you paste this URL in Twitter, it will not generate a icon. And also, I have noticed, you know, last week, the Google scum they change things all the time secretly. You know, I have noticed. For some URL, this this URL, I mean, for some YouTube video, this URL will not work at all. Meaning, for example, I find some URL and I, you know, I use this embed URL. I go to the website, I paste it, I press enter. It says video doesn't exist. Okay, but however, if you remove the, you know, if you change to the proper URL. So what is the proper URL? Okay, here is the proper URL. So let's let's complete it. Uh, thank you, thank you, Bethlehem and Mew. So here is the proper format for a URL. So you instead of embed, you want watch question mark v equals two. Okay, that's what you want. So anyway, so I was saying, you know, the embed URL does force, you know, it sometimes stops working because I think it's because for no good reasons because YouTube some f for some political reasons they I think yeah, yeah, you know it's my guess okay YouTube be is becoming you know Google becoming unpredictable they change things at will without telling you so anyway so you know it's di it's different 10 years before 10 years before they are like they have API you know they please use uh, our API they are so helpful and you know they are you know um right you you are right but that's not the case i mean i'm talking about i'm talking about the video that that did not disable embed you know but you are right there's you know some video you can disable embed so there's one more thing to do you see so we need to change this format to the um 
to the other. So it close it, reopen. Uh, uh, let's go back to the e e Emac Lisp. So there's uh, one more thing we need to do. Uh, but meanwhile, I need to fix this. Um, uh, now, now, now it's uh, screwed. <laughs> so first of all, um, okay. So okay. So that's that is that. So originally it looks like that. Yeah, I think I have a backup here. It's always useful. Copy, paste, close. So backup. Check if they are identical. Uh, search. Wait. Identical. Okay. Good. So anyway, so this. So let's. Uh, there's one more thing to do. So okay. So what we need to do is. Um, insert URL. Go to go to char. Go to the beginning of the buffer. Then search for word search forward I want to replace embed okay I want to replace the word embed slash okay copy that okay so I want to replace as I, I want to find the embed slash uh, and then search for then replace match okay then I need to insert this this part uh, this part this string that's it let's hope so eval buffer go back where is it here okay select it call the command please <laughs> yes, it worked. Uh, let's try it. Copy it. Brave. Open in Brave. Open. Open in Brave. Oh, we don't want to open in Brave. Shit. Uh, close. Close Brave. Uh, wait. So o open the new tab. Paste the link. Enter. Wait. Did it something change? Hold on a second. Open a link, open tab, paste. Oh, we need to delete the question mark rel equals to zero. Yeah, one more thing, okay. One more thing. You know, so it's cumbersome whenever want you you want to do uh, find replacing Emacs because you need actually three lines. But I actually have a package that simplifies it. Uh, just search for, uh, you know, on my Ugo Emacs website. Uh, anyway, so we want to release equals to zero. We want to search for that. Okay, so eval buffer, go back. Where it is always somewhere? Ah. Oh, I closed it. Now, okay, this is wrong again. Okay. Uh, another command to the rescue <laughs> show copy history uh, and now this is what we want copy history copy close okay paste paste it's just paste a lot so we, we can work on them so okay so now select it call the command uh, yes okay you uh, question mark is wrong okay uh, Oh, you need a question mark. So this will be question mark. Eval buffer. OK, let's try it again. What? Uh, wait, something is wrong. Yeah, right. Uh, um, wait, anyway, so what? Uh, go to main. Why is the release not deleted? 
Oh, okay. So yeah, it actually should be here. Re eval buffer selected. Call the command. Yeah, I think it worked. Copy the URL. Open a new tab. Paste. Good. So that's that's it for today. You know, it's uh, one big rambling, and I was late. So anyway, so that's done. I hope you, I hope you guys learned something. You need to put cursor on. On last slash. What do you mean? Oh no, no. What happened is that the you see. What I was doing is here. You see, I moved the cursor. You know, remember we moved the embed here. Once we remove the embed, we can insert the watch there because it needs to be you know right there. But however, if we do this first, if we do this, the cursor will be at the end of the line. So then you insert the watch. You know that's the wrong place. So that is why. So the this you see this needs to be there. But anyway, the whole code is not, you know, it's, I mean, I mean, this is just quick demo. I mean, if you want to really want to do this, there's a lot of refactors to be done. You know, this is, <laughs> this is just quick demo. I mean, it, it's good in a way that it shows you, you know, how each thing, you know, you do each thing. Uh, but if you, but but on the whole, I wouldn't, you know, uh, there's, there are better ways because on the whole, you would actually first use the regular expression to extract this part. Then do another expre uh, regular expression to extract the caption part. Then just remove the whole thing. Then paste those two lines. That, that, that's what I would do. I think that, that would be better. So, um, some of YouTube video disable embed. Okay, so you, uh, yeah, yeah. YouTube v, uh, YouTube API is cancer. On phone, it does not allow to listen to videos in the background. Why does it not? Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, you you see, YouTube, you know, over the past ten years, they become bad. Yeah, I I mean Google, not just YouTube. Google, they they change things at will. They do political things. They don't tell you. Uh, they do, you know, devious things to make money, things like that. So Bethel Mew says there is an open source app called Pipe that fetches the website version of the YouTube and allows you to listen to videos in the background. Uh, does that extract the YouTube, uh, the video as well, or is it just audio? Because I mean I'm using the YouTube get. I mean there's a there's a Linux command. I mean it's also available on the Mac and Windows. It's a command line. Uh, you, YouTube download. Uh, YouTube dash dl. Okay. And uh, well, let me show you the URL because there are a lot of fake things these days. So, sorry um, Linux. Let's go to my website. Okay. So I have it written here. Um, you just go to my Linux page. Uh, this is a Linux by command line tutorial. It's very good for beginners. Uh, all the essential command lines, you know, you can operate. You know, you, on Linux, you need is here. So, and I explain concepts, you know, such as permissions, user groups, uh, top processes, things like that. And so let's see if it's. Uh, Let's search for YouTube. Okay, it's not listed here because it's not. It's somewhere else. You know, I uh, Linux miscellaneous. Let's see YouTube. Oh, there it is. Okay, Linux command to download YouTube. Okay, so that's how you use it. YouTube.dl. So this is the website. Now you have to be careful. So this. I trust this website right now, but you are not sure. You know, tomorrow you can, you know, someone can sort it out. You know, they will be sold out, and then you have, you know, whatever malware. Especially when you update, like on the command line, I can call 
uh, YouTube download. I actually have a uh, a brief. You see YouTube download. Then I just paste the uh, URL of a YouTube. But sometimes you can code uh, update. So like there is a command update, then it automatically pulls from pull from the GitHub. But however, when you do that, you cannot be sure that the GitHub owner changed. You know, it, it, it sometimes happens. You know, sometimes he maybe he sold it out, you know, or maybe he he no longer, you know, he went away somewhere, you know. So there are all these things you have to worry about. So anyway, so that's, that is a useful command I use. But pipe, so what is the uh, URL for pipe then? Money, money. Uh, Yeah, thank you, Oleg. Yeah, I, I found that. So, bathroom you say is uh, anyone since school and as far as you hear is. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, ha, ha, so you have used the original YouTube? I never used the original YouTube. I've never actually seen it. The first time I see it is already YouTube. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Facebook pretty bad. So I, so that's it for today. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Let's see how many. Bye. Have a good day.